you would turn your Bibles to the book of Isaiah chapter 8, verse 17. The book of Isaiah 8, verse 17. And as we begin, I just want to talk to God. Let us bow our heads in a quick moment before we turn our Bibles. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for being so good. We thank you for being so kind today. We bless your name. We ask that you would speak to us today. Speak to our minds, our bodies, and our souls. Somebody here is seeking a word from you. Somebody is looking for an answer. We pray, God, that you would just sink something into their spirit today. Thank you, God, for your word that illuminates our path and teaches us the way to go. So, Father, as we dwell into it, we believe you're going to speak to us today. So hide me behind your cross today. As I am just your servant, I am just your messenger because you are the living God. You live, move, breathe, and you have our very being, and you're right here today. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, amen. Amen. Today I just want to just take a quick moment to uh, speak and teach to you from the subject of what do you do, I'm going to ask the question, what do you do when God seems distant? What do you do, say, what do you do when God seems distant? The question is asked, what do you do when you can't feel God moving in your life? The question is asked, what do you do when you're waiting for an answer and it doesn't seem like the answer is on the way? The question is, what do you do when it seems as if God is not there? When it seems like God is not speaking to you, when it seems like nobody is home upstairs, when it seems like things are happening but nobody seems to be helping, it seems like we're praying and nobody is responding. I don't know if I'm speaking to myself, but there are some times when it feels like nobody is there. There are some times when we're crying on the inside and it seems like nobody is consoling us. There are some times when it feels like we're reaching out, but nobody is reaching back to us. What do we do when we see these things happening in our world, like the school shooting on, on just this past Friday, what do we do when crazy thing is happening in our world? Where is God in the midst of all of it? What do we do when we think that God should have done something a little bit quicker? What, what do we do when we feel like his timing doesn't match up with our timing? There are times in our lives where it feels like God is far away. I myself have had many times in my life where I felt like things just didn't go in my favor. My, my advocate, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it seemed as if he didn't hear my cry. It seemed as if he wasn't responding. There have been plenty of times when I have encountered what I like to call the silence of life. But what I want to tell you this Afternoon is that when silence occurs, I'm comforted by the word of God through the book of Isaiah. Because I feel like if you allow it to, it will soothe your soul. I, Isaiah had the same sentiment that some of us have even on today. But in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 17, the text says this it says, The Lord has hidden himself from his people. But then right after that, he said, But I trust him and I place my hope in him. Well, today I just want to be the reporter today and I want to say I'm happy to report to you and to seek in your spirit that no matter how distant God may feel at times, I want to report to you that God is real and God is right there with you. God is real no matter how you feel. Can you turn to your neighbor? Somebody needs to hear it. Turn your neighbor on the right or on the left. Say, God is real no matter how you feel. See, the truth of the matter is it's easy to worship God and talk about God when things are going great in your life. When the money is good, it's easy to worship God. When the food is on your table, it's easy. When, we, when you're provided with good friends around you, when you're provided with family around you, and when you're healthy and when things are going good and things are making you real happy, but, but what do you do when circumstances aren't so good? 
How do you worship God then? You know, I've spoken on many occasions about the fact that we ought to be close friends with God. And one of the facts about friendship is that they are often tested through separation and through silence. So you have to know that in your friendship and personal relationship with God, you won't always feel close to him. It's noted in any relationship that there are times of closeness and times of distance. No matter how close it is, friendships go back and forth like a pendulum swinging from one side to the other side. And, and, the, way, and the way we work is we want God to answer us in 10 seconds. But we'll give our friends a pass. We haven't seen some of our closest friends in 10 years. And when they come back around, we invite them in with open arms. But let God let something bad happen to you or let God not answer your prayer and some folk are out here wondering if he's the right one for you let one hardship come your way and some folk forget that we walk by faith and not by sight but all I want you to understand today is that what we must realize about God is that sometimes the silence of God is just a test Sometimes the silence of God, sometimes when God seems silent in your life, it is just a test. You know, God is known to put people to the test. Can I get an amen? And he does that to mature us. Say mature us. He does that to mature the relationship. He, he tests us with what I like to call long periods of separation and long periods of quietness and times when we feel abandoned and times when we feel forgotten. The question I just want to ask you this morning, has anybody ever felt like God was quiet in their life? Anybody ever felt like their prayers just went up and bounced off the ceiling? Well, even though you may, you may feel that way today, I want you to relax and I want you to take what we used to call a chill pill. Say chill out. Because it's only a test. Even David, who was a man after God's own heart, even David frequently complained about God's apparent absence in in the book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse 1, if you're a note taker, Psalms 22, verse 1, David said, why are you standing so far away from me? He said this, he said, why do you hide when I need you the most? Anybody ever felt like he was away from you at the time when you needed him the most? Why have you forsaken me? Why do you remain so distant? Why do you ignore my cries for help? Why have you abandoned me? Why, why, why? But above all this, he said, we know this one thing to be true. He said, I want to tell you this. God never abandoned David and God will never abandon you. That's what you need to know today. Yes, yes, he was quiet in the situation. Yes, he didn't answer for a while. But, but, but this is what we know to be true, that God promised I will never leave you nor forsake you. God promised that. He, that was a promise. So, so why is it that God seems so distant? Because first of all, what he's trying to do is he's trying to develop your faith. He's trying to develop your faith. Job is a prime example of this in the Bible. Job, this is how he coped with some rough times happening in his life. Job went through so much. He lost so much in one single day. He said this. He said, I go east, but I can't find him. He said this, he said, I, can't, I, I go west and I can't find him either. He said, I go to the north, he's not there. He said, I turn to the south and nothing. But Job declared and resolved that regardless of what he was feeling, he knows where I'm going. Let me say that one more time. Regardless of what Job was feeling, he believed it in his heart that God knew where he was going. And God was right there with him. Even if I can't see him, he knows where I am. I don't know about you, but that's a praise break right there. Even if I can't see him, he knows that I'm right there. He knows where I am and where he has tested me. Job said, like gold in the fire, he will pronounce me innocent. So Job said, I'm going to believe God is there even though I'm having a tough time tracing him. He said, I'm going to trust God even though I'm painting right now. 
He said, I'm going to trust God regardless of what I'm going through because I want him to know that when he's ready, I'm ready. I want him to know when he's ready to heal, I'm ready to receive my healing. I wanted him to know when he's ready to give me my promotion, I'll be ready to receive it right then and there. So regardless of what you're going through this morning, I just want to send you the message, you got to continue to love. You got to continue to trust. You got to continue to obey. You got to continue to give. You got to continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. Even if you have no sense of where he is in your life or no evidence that he's working it out, you got to know in your heart that God is still there. He's still there. He's still there. You've got to show him that you've kept the faith and didn't give up way too soon. See, the problem in life is that people give up way too soon. And see, you've got to hold out because God has something for you, but he needs to sometimes test your faith and see if you're ready to, for him to give you what you need until you're ready for him to give you what actually will bless your life. The moments we go through in life, the, the quiet moments are what the Bible calls a testing of your faith. And the question is, will you pass the test? question I ask you can you worship God no matter what's going on in your life can you worship God no matter how you're feeling on today can you worship God no matter how many times God said no can you worship God no matter how many times he said that you've got to wait on it can you worship God no matter how many times he said I'm not ready to bring you out just yet can you worship God even though he hasn't shown you a way out? Can you pass what the Bible says, the test of faith? See, we don't worship God for what he can do for us. We should, we should worship him simply because he is good. We should worship God simply because God is good. A lot of people worship God for what he can do for you, but I want to tell you, he has done enough. I don't know who I'm speaking to directly this morning, but, but hasn't God been good to your life? Hasn't God healed you? Hasn't God delivered you from something? Can't you just say that God has done something for your life? Think about it. We shouldn't serve God just for what we want. A lot of times we stay so focused on the acts. We, we need to get into serving God because he knows just what we need he knows when we need it he knows how you need it but I'm gonna go back to it he knows when you need it even when you don't know his timing I want to tell you today he knows and just the fact of knowing God and accepting him can help you what I want to tell you right in the nick of time having the right faith at the right time can help you in the nick of time you know, I'm reminded of the story about this young man. He was an atheist. He didn't believe in God. He had no belief whatsoever, and he was training to be an Olympic diver. The only religious influence in his life came from one of his buddies who was a minister of the gospel. He was a Christian minister. This young man, though, this athletic diver, never really paid much attention to his sermons, but he heard it. He heard it from time to time, and one night, the diver went into an indoor pool at his college that he attended. He was going to practice, and the lights were all off, but there was, a, there was a moonlight, there was a pool, a big skylight at this pool, so he could basically have plenty of, of light to practice with. Well, that one night, this young man, he climbed up at the top of a diving board, and, and he went to the highest one, and as he turned his back to the pool on the edge, he brought his arms open wide, and so he looked at his shadow on that wall, and the shadow of his body looked like the shape of a cross. Well, at the right moment, instead of diving, he knelt down and asked God to come into his life. And so as the young man, he walked back to the stairs and he was getting away from the edge of the diving board, a maintenance man had walked into that arena where that pool was and come to find out the pool had been drained for repairs. What I want to tell you today is that trusting God and having faith in God at the right moment can save your life. 
So let's get back to it. How does he expect you to act when he's silent? How does he expect you to act when you can't feel him there? What does he expect us to do as believers? How do you praise God when you don't understand what's happening in your life? How do you stay connected to him in a crisis without communication? How do you keep your eyes stayed on Jesus when they're full of tears? Back to my original question today. What do you do when God seems distant and God seems silent in your life? Well, there's three things that I want you to keep in your back pocket, then I'm out. Three things to focus on when he's quiet in your life. Number one, you got to focus on who God is. You got to focus on who, say who, God is. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, it means no matter what the circumstances is and how you're feeling at the moment, you got to hold on to God's unchanging hand. You got to stick to what you know. You got to hang on to God's unchanging character. Now, what are some of the character traits of God? He's, he's a God of love. Say love. I want to tell you today, if nobody loves you, God loves you. If you don't feel no love, I still want to tell you, God loves you. He's a God of something else that I want you to know. He's a God of peace. Somebody say peace. God will bring peace into your life in due time if you stand firm. He's also a God of joy. He'll bring some joy into your life. Not just the joy that you get from this earth. Not just that joy that is fleeting and that won't stick around. But the joy that the world didn't give to you and the joy that the world cannot take away. He's a God of joy. You know, another thing I like about God, he's a forgiving God. He forgives you for what you did so you don't have to sit in it. Some of us just sit in what we did on yesterday when God already forgave you a long time ago. You need to step into your forgiveness and say, I am forgiven and I'm stepping into my grace. Is there somebody in this place that's willing to step into the grace of God and thank God that he forgave you? What else? Step into his mercy. Say mercy. You got to thank him for the second chance you're living in right now. If you in this church right now, you're living in a second chance. You may not have thought that you were on the brink of death, but at the end of the day, he stopped some things from happening in your life that you need to just say, thank you, Lord. I didn't even know it was coming, but I made it through and you have been so good. And so for that, I'm going to thank you for your mercy and I'm going to thank you for your grace. The Bible teaches that God is good. Say good. God loves you. God is good. God loves you. God is with you. God knows what you're going through. God does care about you. God does have a plan for your life. And because of that, a wise man once said this. He said, never doubt in the dark what God told you in the light. God said this. He said, I notice every detail of your life. God said, I know what you're going through. God said, I'm in control of the situation. God said, I have a plan for you. God said, I will save you. God said, I never left you. You may think I did, but I'm right there. God said, even when you don't feel me, I am still there. So when I'm silent, you just got to focus on who I am. You got to focus on who God is. And then secondly, he's saying when I'm silent, when I'm quiet, what you got to do is you got to trust God to keep his promises. You got to trust God. Say trust God to keep his promise. You know, during times when you feel that he's silent, you must patiently re rely on the promises of God. We don't need to patiently rely on our emotions, not what you're feeling at the moment. You got to realize that he's trying to take you to a deeper level of spiritual maturity. To have the right relationship with the Lord, it must be built on faith and trust. Not just feelings because the way you feel comes and goes, but faith is unshakable. Faith can move mountains. Faith can move your situation. Faith can take you to the next level. Faith is immovable and faith will empower your life. See, faith said this. Faith said that if God before you, who can be against you? 
Faith said, if God is on my side, I'm not worried about who's on the other side. See, when God seems silent, you got to remember, you got to have faith. Can somebody say faith? So you got to focus on who God is, and you got to trust God to keep his promises. And lastly, number three, here's the last one and the best one. This is the one that will always get you through. Don't forget this. Don't neglect this one. I'm telling you, the third thing you got to do when God seems distant, when he seems silent in your life, you got to remember what God has already done for you. When was the last time? When was the last time you took the time out to remember what God has already done for you? I don't know about you, but God has blessed me so much I cannot remember it all. I don't know about you, but God has been such a blessing in my life I can't recall it all. So I better praise and worship him every single time I get up because God has blessed me so much I can't even remember it all. He's been so good to me. I can't even, I can't even fathom the goodness of God. So at the end of the day, I owe him a praise every single day. Most of us are tripping when he's quiet. We tripping out because we spoil you with all the love and the blessings that he showed us in the past. Can you not remember what God has done for you? Is there just one or two people that can remember what God has done for you? Is, if, if, if that's you, just let me know. If, if God has done something for you, just wave your hand for me or something. Just tell me this. Was he with you when you went through the storm? Did he keep you in perfect peace when you went through divorce? Was he with you when, you when somebody fired you? Was he with you when they let you go? Was he with you when they said you weren't going to make it? Did he care for you when nobody else cared for you? Did he give you the right words when you needed them? Did he work all things together in your life? Did he allow you not to be tried above and beyond what you could endure? There's got to be somebody that could attest to the fact that he didn't allow more to be put on you than you could bear. There's got to be somebody in this place that knows that he comforted you, that knows that he consoled you, and knows that he supplied your every need. There's got to be somebody in this place that received the grace, the mercy, the forgiveness, the love, the goodness, the kindness, the love suffering of God. And God did it in your life. God's grace was sufficient for you. So I want to tell you today, when you can't cope with the present, all you got to do is look back at your past and say, if God brought me through it, I know that God's going to bring me to it. If God helped me out of that, I know that he'll bring me out of this. If you believe it this morning, somebody ought to give God a praise. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Somebody ought to say thank you, Jesus. Somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to lift up his name. Somebody ought to think about all the good things that God has done. Somebody ought to praise his name. Lift up his name. Praise his name. Lift up your voice unto God with a voice of triumph. Because if he did it before, he'll do it again. And if that doesn't help you, if that doesn't soothe your soul, all I want you to do is put your hand in front of your face and just breathe right now. Just breathe. If he put breath in your body, if he put breath in your body, I want to tell you, he's a deliverer. If he woke you up this morning, I want to tell you, he's a healer. If he brought you into this church, I want to tell you, he can do some things in your life. So God's moving, even when he's quiet. God's moving, even when it seems silent. God is moving today. He's right in the midst of your situation. I want to tell you today, there's witnesses all around you. I just want you all to stand together. I want you to gather around in groups of five and ten just around your neighbors today just circle around for a moment just grab hands and just circle around today and I just want you to talk to your neighbor if there's somebody in your circle and God has delivered you from something I just want you to say the word just let them know what God delivered you from you don't have to give them the long story just give them the short version tell somebody what God did in your life if he healed you you don't have to again get into detail just tell them what God did in your life what has God done in your life right now? Just, just speak a word right now. And I hear you right now. Just talk right now. Just fellowship right now. Tell somebody. Somebody needs to know 
that God is able. Somebody's in a silent moment. They need to know that God does heal. They need to know that God does deliver. They know that God may not have come when they wanted him, but he was right on time. Tell somebody today what God did for your life right now. Just talk to somebody right now. Just talk to somebody. Yes, tell somebody right now. Yes, tell somebody right now. That's it. That's it. So if you came in here today and your faith was shaken, if you came here today and God was quiet, I want to show you how God is moving. Sometimes you can see God moving through somebody else because if he did it for them, I want to tell you he'll do it for you. If he delivered them, I want to tell you he'll deliver you. All you've got to do is make sure that you have the right relationship with him. All you got to do is make sure that he's in your heart and that you believe that he died on the cross for your sins and that he rose from the grave on the third day. If you're here today and he's not in your heart, ask him to encompass your heart right now. Ask him to be in your spirit. He's moving. He's moving. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Does somebody feel it moving today? Can you feel it moving today? If you feel it moving, say amen. If you feel it moving, say hallelujah. Can somebody praise him in your circle? Can somebody praise him because of the testimony that you just heard today? Can somebody thank him right now? Thank him right now. Thank him right now. Praise him right now. Lift up your voice right now. God is good. He's good. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of grace. He's a God of grace. There's witnesses all in this place of how good God really is. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Father, today in the name of Jesus, as we're circled around, we thank you, God, for the testimony of our neighbors. So when we are weak, we know that you're strong. When we can't feel you, God, we know that we've got somebody right next to us that says, hold out just a little while longer. Hold out. I'm right there. If I did it for your brother, if I did it for your sister, I'll be there in the midst of what you go through. I may not come when you want to, but I'm right there. I'm right there in the nick of time. I'm right there, right there, right next to you, holding on to you. Hold on to me. Hold on to my unchanging hand because I don't change. My character remains the same. I'm the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm the Savior. I'm the Savior. Woo! My brothers and my sisters, as you stand today, there's somebody in this place that needs to receive God into their heart. There's somebody here today that needs to know that God is able. But the first step is to saying, God,